Hi, I'm Ed Zinda, and this is What the Funk. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can quickly and easily integrate cross-chain bridging into your apps using the Lee Finance API. But first, if you're new to this channel, here at What the Funk, we talk about all things Web3 and blockchain development. If that's something that you're into, make sure to subscribe to this channel and click that bell notification icon so you can stay up to date whenever I post a new video. Let's get into it. Here in 2022, at the time of this recording, it seems like every other week a new blockchain has been announced. If you want to play around with these blockchains, first you've got to get some funds onto these blockchains. The easiest way to get funds from one blockchain to another is to use a bridge. But with so many blockchains and so many bridges, how can you tell which bridges support which blockchains and which tokens? Thankfully, the folks over at Lee Finance have done this all for you. They've built a nice and simple UI that allows you to bridge tokens from one chain to another with just a few clicks. But what if you have a cross-chain application? and you want your users to be able to bridge tokens from one chain to another without having to leave your app. Lee.Finance has made this super simple with the release of their API. Full disclosure, I'm actually a member of the team at Lee.Finance. I have, however, not been paid or sponsored by Lee Finance to make this video. I'm just really excited about what we're building here and I think what we're building is pretty cool. With that out of the way, let's get into some code. So over here I have a blank index.js file. The first thing we're gonna do is import ethers.js and Axios. From Ethers, we're going to import Ethers, Contract, and Utils, and then Axios. Axios is a library for easily interacting with REST APIs. Next, we'll define an API URL, which is lee.quest slash v1. So this is the version one of the Lee Finance API. To send our funds, we're going to need a wallet. So we're gonna generate a wallet from a mnemonic phrase, and then we're going to use the address generated by that mnemonic phrase and send our tokens from that address. We need to know this address so we can tell Lee where to send the tokens after they've been bridged to the other side. Next, we're gonna set up some parameters. So we're going to send from the Polygon chain and we're going to send USDC. We're going to send this USDC to the XDAI chain and we're going to keep that token as USDC. If you want, however, using this API, you're able to swap from USDC to another token. But for simplicity's sake, we're just going to bridge a token. Next, we define an amount. We're gonna send one USDC, which is represented by a large number. On EVM compatible blockchains, all numbers are represented as large integers. So in this case, this would represent a one with six decimal places. Then we define our from address, which is the address we defined above. And this lets Lee Finance know where to send our tokens when we bridge them. Next, we set up a provider wallet using ethers. We want to connect to the Polygon RPC URL with the Polygon chain ID of 137. And then using the mnemonic that we defined earlier, we create a wallet instance. The first step to interacting with the Lee Finance API is to get a quote from the API. So here I've simply defined a function called getQuote, and then we use axios.get, which makes a get request to our API URL and the quote endpoint. And then we send the parameters that we defined above. Finally, we return the result of that REST API call. The next function we're going to define is a get status function. And what this does is call the status endpoint on the Lee Finance API to check whether or not our bridge transaction has been completed on both ends. This will take some parameters that we already defined above, plus a bridge and TX hash parameter, which are received from the quote endpoint of the API. We'll see how this is used later. Next, we want to create a function called check and set allowance. When using Ethereum compatible blockchains and ERC20 tokens, in order for the various bridges to actually spend your ERC20 tokens, you need to give them an approval to do so. So this function first checks the allowance given to the Lee Finance bridge. And if our wallet hasn't given them approval for this specific ERC20 token, we go ahead and approve it. Finally, we define a function to go ahead and execute all of those steps we defined above. First, we get our quote. Once we have our quote, we check and set allowance, and then we send an actual transaction to the blockchain. The Lee Finance API makes this super simple by giving you the transaction you need to call straight in the quote object returned by the API. And all you need to do is take this and pass this to your wallet and the send transaction function. 
we call tx.wait to wait for the transaction to be mined. And then finally, in order to check whether or not our bridging transaction has been completed on the receiving chain, we call our get status function continuously until the status is either done or failed. The final step is to call this run function and then wait until everything is completed. And then we just console log done. In order to run this script, we just open up our terminal and type node index.js. And after everything's complete, you should see done in your console and the program should exit. And that's it. That's a super simple way you can integrate cross-chain bridging into your applications using the Leaf Finance API. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to smash that like button. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.